Hey, John, how's it going? I, I can't hear you. That's because I'm not saying anything. I'm just funny. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> how's it going, brother? It's going good, my friend. Good, good. Uh, thank you for being on. Um, just to uh, quickly refresh, we started this podcast uh, once the Commonwealth of Massachusetts shut down all the bars. Um, try to w raise awareness and some tips for people that were out of work. And uh, like I had said over email to your wife, this is a service industry podcast. So would you join me for a drink today? You know, I'm, I'm not much for alcohol, but let's see here. Today I finished off a, a Del Mar, a, oh. <laughs> a Jameson, uh, and I still have a little bit of Jameson left in here. Um, <laughs> like I said, I'm not much of a drinker. No, three clearly. three quarts a day is about the max I ever do. But yes, I've got I've got some Irish whiskey here. I just poured with water. All right. Well, I got some tequila here that I'm going to pour real quick. What brand? Oh, uh, I've been drinking this Espolone lately. It's not bad. You know what? I've never had it. Yeah, it's not bad. Never had kind it. of middle of the shelf, you know? You know, I prefer Ray Posado, which got more of a flavor, quite frankly, but um, Ray Posado meaning the, the uh, classification. Uh, right. You're well. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with white tequila. Nah, nah. It's the middle of the day over here, so start off late. All right. <laughs> well, to... to uh, to the future of America. Thank you, my <laughs> friends. Thank you, brother. So, you've been spending most of your life, according to this email, blabbering in bars to bartenders. So, you're gonna blabber to me for a little while today, but I gotta no, know. No, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not very drunk. I've only had a couple of quarts today. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, we can pick, we can pick it up. It's up to you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Why don't you ask me a question? I'll blabber on the question. How's that? That's much easier for me. Well, I want to know. I don't have to choose anything. <laughs> well, I want to know about you getting tossed out of bars by doormen. You got a story? You got something that sticks out of your mind? <laughs> Actually, I don't. I really don't. Um, I mean, I've been tossed out of whorehouses before. <laughs> for various and sundry things. No, really, I have. Um, I have been tossed out of a bar by a fucking doorman. Really, I'm, I'm a well-behaved customer, no matter where I am, whether I'm in a bar or uh, a, uh, an opium den in Kathmandu. Really, <laughs> I don't have a story. I mean, I'm not that one. I mean, maybe ask for something else. Hey, uh, that's I've, fine. I have, I've picked up at least uh, 2,000 women in bars. <laughs> I have... Um, <laughs> You know, done that. Oh, here's one. It's okay. So, young kid in New York City. I lived in New York City twice. The first time was in uh, 1969. Okay. How old I were you then? In 1969. I said, born in 45, 65. I was 24. Okay. 24 years old. Working for NASA, uh, Institute uh, for Space Studies in New York City. And I, I was 24, charismatic, not bad looking back then. Had a mustache. Uh, women loved mustaches back in. 69. They still do. They still do. <laughs> Fair enough. Then okay. Um, and um, I, I just wanted to experiment. I mean, like you know, I, I did like every guy: go up and chat up a woman and smile. And who are you? And, Mm -hmm. Try to remember the name so that if I got lucky, I could say, uh, uh, oh, Susie, that was great, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and so then I just go, fuck it. And so <laughs> for about a year. And in New York, by the way, has more single bars than any fucking city in the planet. I don't know why. Lonely people, lonely women. I don't fucking know. Well, at least it did back then. Mm. So I, I started going, you know, I'm a mathematician. Okay. I started one night at a bar on Lexington Avenue and 51st Street, not far from where I was working uptown. Um, and I went up to a beautiful girl and said, hi, would you like to fuck? And she just turned away. 
And I went up to another one, hi, would you like to fuck? And, and she literally stabbed me. Went up to another one, hi, would you like to fuck? And she was with a girlfriend, and they all just laughed. I think the sixth or seventh one <laughs> said, um, that's the most refreshing approach I've ever seen. Do you live near here? And I go, yes, just down the street. Well, fuck me, that began an entire year of, listen, how long did that take? Fuck, a minute and a half? What did it cost me in terms of booze? Nothing. I didn't have to buy anybody a drink. Didn't have to make small talk. Nothing. Um, <laughs> I like those odds. <laughs> pardon? Yes, 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 yes. So no, um, I didn't do that for a whole year. I did, I don't know, for a few months. And then I started on another thing. I, I went for probably four years after that, only having sex with married women. And here's why. I mean, I was young, charismatic, and moderately good looking, and a small degree of intelligence. And women sometimes, I rarely wanted a second chance, another play, another tap, or whatever. <laughs> To the point that they would fucking hang out across the street from the entrance of my apartment and see who I was taking home. <laughs> How long they stayed. <laughs> it didn't work for me. Um, married women don't do shit like that. No, 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 no. They're, they're, they're <laughs> quite happy to go home to their husbands and say nothing. Allegedly. Um, <laughs> not allegedly, my friend. In all truth, in all fucking truth, so <laughs> I had no problems for the time, and I refused. If a woman was single, yeah, listen, bitch, you got nothing for me. Um, <laughs> but um, if a woman was married, I would spend time. Why? First of all, married women are better in bed. Notice why? Especially if they've been married for a few years. Um, they don't get much outside sex. Um, sex with their husbands is like husband sex with wives after, I don't know, 18 months. Kind of dies off. I mean, let me think about it. I mean, it's the same woman, same sex. Start the same. Wow! <laughs> Come here, baby. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Janice. <laughs> this, is my, this is my current wife. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Janice. Uh, How are you? Too many. Yes, and we've been married for eight years, so what the we, fuck are you trying to say, mister? <laughs> I'm just talking about people when they're young. Now, when you get old, it's different. Right? Is it? Is, but when... Yeah, see how he's backpedaling here, huh? Just a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I sleep much sounder than she does, so uh, <laughs> a man that sleeps sound must keep peace with his wife if he expects to live long. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'll no, not at all. Back. Don't apologize. Well, you Thank threw you. the fucking toilet paper at me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it was on a bottle. <laughs> it was on a bottle. A knife. Anyway, uh, um, yeah, so, so married women are, fuck me, <laughs> 10 times as good in bed as single women. Why? They're pent up. They're used to... One man, one one system. We start off doing this, then we do this, then we do that, then we do that, then we do that. And sometimes there's some strange shit, but not often. And that's it. They're at some point, you hit up. your point. You the and they meet some meet some twenty five year old, charismatic, not bad looking, intelligent uh, young guy. Um, uh, you know, with a um, with a plan. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, yeah, I got great sex, and I, I can't think of a single time that a married woman was hanging outside my condo in New York at 2 a.m. Uh, they don't do shit like that, right? Right. Her right. husbands want to know, where the fuck were you? Right. right. No, 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 no. Now, scheduling is a problem. Right? However, <laughs> No, scheduling is a serious. You just can't call a married man. Hey, yeah. right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ellen, um, I'm free tonight at eleven fifteen. Oh, man, that shit don't happen. Well, I'm sorry, but my husband and I are going to a, a formal ball with his company. I'm not going to be out until, and I don't even think I can get away. But next Tuesday, well, so I'll write that down. Right, next Tuesday, possibility, Ellen. Well, you know, you call 15 of them in one night, and pretty soon, you're pretty well 
booked for the next week. I mean, you know, um, it, it takes effort. Oh, it takes you're effort. a man with a plan. <laughs> but I had a fucking plan, you know. I did that for years, and then, you know, the juggling just got old. It really did. Um, it sounds tiresome. <laughs> it is. And then actually, you know, after I had quite a few, or quite a, quite a few, I don't know, 50, 60 married women on the hook all the time, uh, every now and then, uh, if their husbands will just leave suddenly on business, the bitches would, in fact, uh, show up. Now, they're much more forgiving than single women. You go out and meet a girl at a bar, you take her home, give her a good time. Uh, you know, if you have to tell them that you love them just in order to do X, Y, or Z. If you love me, if you may do anal sex, uh, then I love you, baby. Um, whatever. So now, um, <laughs> well, they go to carry a fucking grudge. Whereas a married woman, understand, she's cheating on her own fucking husband. I cannot be expected, please. I can only want to see you once every two goddamn weeks. At whatever weird time you can get the fuck away, do you expect me to be celibate? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> your husband, you're at home fucking your husband. I don't give a shit how bad it is. <laughs> fuck somebody else. All right, yeah. Yeah, fuck it. You're not the one married. Well, at the time, yeah, it, it just not. simply got way. You know, I'm a mathematician, which allowed me to keep it going for a couple of years. So, but the scheduling <laughs> algorithms became too complex for my my uh, <laughs> my pitiful math talents. It required second order partial differential equations, which I never did well at at school. So now, uh, that was it. And I don't know that that helped any in the bar scene, but we did talk about bar scenes. Yeah, no, that's good enough for me. And we don't stay on the bar during this podcast. We bounce around. So I actually... Oh, do we? Oh, yeah. I mean, okay, then. part of talking to somebody at a bar is talking about life and what's going on, you know, and that's how customers treat me. They just want to tell me about their day, what's going on, their opinions on shit, you know. Um, but I want to ask. Well, well, here's a nice thing about bar. Yeah. Excuse me. I mean, I've been down and out a few times in my life. I've actually been unemployed. Uh, I've actually lived on the street. Um, if you're having hard times and you like a fairly decent meal, I mean, not ketchup and crackers like you might get at um, Wendy's, but a more decent meal than ketchup and crackers, um, you can go to a nice bar, dress fairly nice, and sit at the bar and bartender, what would you like? I'm waiting for a friend. Uh, I'm going to start with Oh, okay. Uh, do you have any nuts, uh, olives, you know, whatever? We need to have a fairly decent meal. Go to the bathroom, walk out the back, go down to the next bar, do the same fucking thing. So now, um, those, those are advantages that bars have that um, restaurants uh, just don't have. Right. Um, um, <laughs> yes, yes, there you have it. Um, so completely off topic. But it's actually a popular topic on this podcast. Um, so I've, I've watched a bunch of videos. I've watched you do a podcast, your vignettes that you put out yourself. I don't know if anybody's ever told you this, but when you talk, most of the time, it's like you're shooting a wrestling promo. Were you a wrestling fan growing up in Virginia at all? Oh, fuck no, dude. I'm not any sports fan. I mean, no. <laughs> I used to play. I used to play football and baseball. But fuck me, I don't like watching it. What idiot likes to watch other people have fun? <laughs> God damn, I'd rather have fun myself. I'm sorry. I ain't sitting back and watching the whole fucking football game. And I'd watch, um, you know, watch three dozen people have a blast. What the fuck fun is it? It's kind of like watching a, porno. That's like, watching <laughs> porno makes more sense, doesn't it? I mean, you can masturbate to porno. Try <laughs> masturbating to a football game. Listen, you, you can't do it. As, as right? somebody that is, has been a professional wrestler for 15 or so years, there's plenty of people masturbating to wrestling out there. <laughs> there, there probably are. I, I was never one. You know, I mean, probably more women than men, I would suspect. Uh, no. no. More men than women masturbating oh, yeah. to wrestling today. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, listen, I don't know what to say about that because I have no experience in it. And I try not to comment on things in, in which I, I have no experience. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so... I feel like I'd be doing a disservice to myself if I didn't bring up crypto with you because when I first started subscribing you to Twitter was when the crypto thing was getting hot and you started doing the coin of the day. And I got to admit, 
I took advantage of the pump and dumps and made a little bit of money off your point of the day for a while. Yeah. Well, that's your business. Hey, you know, why not? <laughs> um, but Great. I know, I know you think Bitcoin's dead or it isn't going to be what it's it supposed is. to be, it but is. I got to ask you, it's a two part question. What cocktail or liquor will you pair when you have to eat your own dick? And have you gotten into whale fucking yet? Yeah, I've gotten into whale fucking. I invented whale fucking. <laughs> whale fucking. Um, no, uh, please God, that, that was the biggest joke on the planet. I know please. people just ran with it and uh, ran with it and ran. They it's fucking ran with it. First of all, I want to say because the fucking Bitcoin maximalists they drive me goddamn crazy. It's like yeah. they're blind, like horses with blinders on, right? They're, yep. Going to, uh, hang on, this is all I see. You must be see us being hallucinating. No, I'm not hallucinating. Um, <laughs> no. So I wanted to say a hundred thousand dollars, but people <laughs> close to me said, you know what? Someone's going to believe that. No one's going to believe it. Yes, they will. So I said, okay, a million dollars, a million fucking dollars. It was supposed to be a joke. I did it the same day. As I as predicted that whale fucking, fucking will surpass. Surfing, surfing <laughs> as the number one goddamn water sport on the planet. Yeah. Now, please. I mean, who can? can and there's people that took that seriously. There's yes, people that took that seriously. I believe how many people actually said, I think you're a horrible person. You're a horrible <laughs> person for fucking whales. I'm going, uh, listen, I, I don't know if you thought this through. <laughs> whales do weigh. People don't think it through. Because I said humpbacks, right? Them. I said specifically humpbacks. You they weigh 70,000 fucking pounds, people. 50 feet long. Uh, got a tail that can smash sailboats. Yeah. Uh, and they can dive to a fucking half mile. Yeah. How the fuck is anybody going to fuck one? <laughs> I mean, they're going, first of all, it's non consensual. Non fucking consensual. <laughs> Non-consensual. <laughs> if a human being manages to fuck one of those leviathons, you better goddamn well believe it was consensual. I mean, <laughs> if the humans survive, please. It's all right. So no, people um, won't believe anything. It's the really most will. horrific of things. So people yeah. believe that. Well, it's not my goddamn fault. I'm sorry. I'm hey. not gonna eat my dick. <laughs> so where do you where do you see the future of crypto? Because I know you just released one of your own. Which is completely private, right? Untraceable. Oh, the the future crypto has to be in privacy coins. Please let's wake up. Do you understand with Bitcoin, with Ethereum, uh, and others? If I send you ten dollars in Bitcoin, or if you send me ten for whatever reason, you know, we want to bet. Um, we were in a whorehouse. I didn't have ten dollars. You owe me ten. Who gives a shit? Right. Once I've done that, I have to have your wallet address, and now you have mine. Mm -hmm. Forever after, I can look in your wallet and see how much you have, what came in and from where and when and what went out. And smart people, they're keeping, they're keeping tabs of Bitcoin wallet addresses like if somebody published the Rolls Royce of London, their Bitcoin fucking wallet. Well, listen, great. We can go in and see how much those motherfuckers are making. Do you understand wow. that? If your bank did that, for example, let's say a plumber came to your house and fixed your sink. Okay. You write him a check for $20. He takes it to the bank and says, hi, <laughs> uh, I have a, um, uh, a check here from uh, Mr. Bartender for $20. Uh, can you tell me how much money he has? Oh, yes, yes, that's a second. Uh, oh, he's got this much money. Wonderful. Can you tell me what his last 10 deposits were and who they were from? Oh, yes, absolutely. And do you mind forever after notifying me whenever money comes into Mr. Bartender's account or goes out of it? And the bank goes, of course we will. You would change banks, I think. Yeah, yeah, it sounds That's what Bitcoin yeah, ludicrous. Bitcoin is, people. This is why it is so ridiculous that institutional fucking investors <laughs> who do not understand the first thing of crypto are buying it. Mm. Fine, be my guest. Uh, it's going to die. We all know it's going to die. It's an old, ancient technology. It's got no privacy. You can't put a smart contract on it. The blockchain is creaky, clinky, uh, archaic, and you can't run dApps on it. Fuck me, it's worthless. What is worth value? Why don't you go on the, on, on the dark web? Now, it used to be, <laughs> seven years ago, you went on the dark web, everybody took Bitcoin. 
That's yeah. why Bitcoin had value, people. Yeah, on, on the Silk Road. That's why it fucking had value. Yeah. Nobody anywhere in the fucking world accepts Bitcoin anymore, except exchanges where people buy it and sell it. <laughs> it's kind of like investing in gold. Yeah. When all the gold has been replaced by a paper slip saying, this is one ounce of gold. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I totally get it. Thing. So, so somebody no, it has to be privacy coins. It has to be people. Let's get real. Please. So then somebody that's just getting into crypto now, because there's plenty of people that don't know anything about it. What would you yes. suggest they do? Because the, the you main study thing is sorry. I would study your sorry asses off because it is a complex field. Mm. Don't. Look at what's happening on exchanges. What are you smoking, by the way? Are you smoking weed or opium? Yeah, I hope you don't mind. A little bit of weed. <laughs> we haven't done the opium before. Uh, do we? Do we condone weed smoking, baby? I mean, I know we smoked some earlier today. But, I mean, that was earlier. <laughs> I, but we. But then again, people's okay, feelings no change. People's I'm feelings. sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, so no I, you I would advise that people study your asses off. Don't look at what institutional investors who's supposed to know what the fuck you're doing. Don't look mm -hmm. at what they're doing. Don't look at the market. Look at the reality of crypto. Who is using what? Used to be everybody used Bitcoin. Right. That's where its value fucking came from. Nobody anywhere on this fucking planet uses it. It's useless. Its utility disappeared as newer crypto came along. Mm. And Unless you do not mind the world, and I mean the fucking world, knowing everything about your finances, then you damn well better be using privacy coins like Monero. Right, right. End of story. Actually, what people or my, or my own coin, Ghost, which is coming live on the twenty second of this month. But I'm not, I'm not promoting mine. I'm saying privacy. End of story. Hey, you, if you don't have it, you have a worthless coin. And it will end up having the value zero. And you all know in the crypto world, everybody fucking knows it's going to zero. Who doesn't know? People who know nothing about crypto, like institutional investors. Do you understand the idiocy that's happening in this world? Uh, there's <laughs> plenty of it, man. There's, there's I'm sorry to laugh. No, it's hard, it, but 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 they're going to go. What the fuck happened? What the fuck happened is you didn't understand what you're investing in. That's right. what happened. But do your own research. You got to figure it out. <laughs> do some research. Yeah, it, it's so obvious. But the, it's got the, no value. Right. None. It did seven years ago. It was the only coin of value. Yep. Now it has none. People, please. God, it's an idea. Kind of like if you're investing in the Model T. Uh, in 1958, when people were buying the 58 core mint. That's a good way to put it. That's a really good way to because put it. Because that's actually. exactly what's happened. You know this. You know this, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a really good way to put it. Um, and uh, no, yeah, that's the thing is that people don't do their own research. They're too lazy these days. They rather someone like you tell them what to do. Oh, what should I buy? What, you know, and that's when I was starting out young. I'm that's what tell I was anybody doing. what to do. I can't, listen. I barely tell me what to do, and I'm, <laughs> I'm fucking wrong most of the time. But Going this with I the do flow? know. I, I, at least in crypto, I do know what has value and what doesn't. And Bitcoin lost all of it. There is none. None. I don't care if it's the largest traded coin. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> we all know there's no value there anymore. There was. And what Bitcoin did, people, was open the door to a fertile field of development in which were planted technologies we had not dreamed of when Bitcoin was around. Mm -hmm. Stable coins like DAI, which never vary more than 1% from the US dollar. And you get stable coins based on anything you want gold, the dollar, the yen. I don't think the size of everybody's penis yet, but who knows? Hey, dick coin. But, yes, but that's stable coins. You've got privacy coins. You've got distributed fucking exchanges, people. They can't ever be shut down. And it's almost impossible to put Bitcoin on one because it's a creaky old ancient technology. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, I see people, <clears throat> apparently, a brain going, 
Yes, Bitcoin is going to. No, are you kidding me, people? Wake the fuck up. Please wake the fuck up. Right. We have time for one more question, my friend. All right. Uh, cool. Um, one more question. Well, <coughs> I, I'm sorry to right. put you on the spot. No, 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 it's fine. Um, you know what? Fine. Let's, uh, let's go like this. If you were, I, I mean, this country's fucking crazy right now. Uh, I, and you, you have an outside perspective of it being out of the country and wherever the hell you are right now. But if you were a 30, 35 year old man living in America right now, knowing what you know now, how would you be living your life? What would you be doing? Depends on where you are. If you're in a large city, I'd be ba keeping Boston, my ass Massachusetts. Inside. Then I would keep my ass inside the house for as long as I could. I would go out when it's safe, buy enough peanut butter, raisins, uh, and water. That's all you need. You're not going to live for a year on peanut butter and raisins because of everything. Everything. Really? Rice and yes. No you shit. Understand? Uh, how, do, how do people in, in uh, Alaska who are on bobsled teams that go for months, um, they have a thing called bannock. What is bannock? Bannock is flour and raisins that's fried on a frying pan. Doesn't taste very good. It's <laughs> forever on bannock. What's, what's infinitely superior is peanut butter and raisins because no shit. bannock does not have many fats and that's what happens in the winter time you don't get many fats uh, you're gonna die people peanut butter's got plenty of fat mm. huge amount of pro protein niacin thiamine every fucking vitamin on the planet and what it is lacking in vitamins raisins make up for them do you understand no that? Shit. So I would wow. go out, and I know it doesn't sound very pleasant to be living on peanut butter and raisins for months, but uh, I go out buy to enough to, to. I would go out and buy enough to survive for a few months. I'd lock my goddamn door, turn on Netflix, and enjoy myself. What buy kind of gun should I get for the revolution? <laughs> what kind of gun should I get for the revolution? <laughs> if you don't already have a gun, I wouldn't get a gun because you're going to shoot yourself or your neighbor accidentally. You know, it, it, you need to understand weapons before you buy one oh, but if you 100%, understand weapons 100%. if you understand weapons i'd get two you need two guns in, in this world uh you need a handgun for inside the house okay mm -hmm. with a high a high high number of rounds i'd, I'd say a clock uh, 17 all right you get 19 rounds in that motherfucker yeah a nice hand nine millimeter nine millimeter don't get a tip don't get a, <laughs> a smith and wesson uh, any, any of the caliber, get a nine. Um, and get yourself a 12 gauge pump shotgun with a short barrel so that you can go through a door sideways with it. All right. Um, because it's shotgun, I mean, all you have to do with a shotgun usually is rack it. All right. So put off one round through the door. Whoever's on the other side, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. One um, shot, yeah. <laughs> a 12 gauge shotgun and a nine millimeter semi automatic handgun, nice holster, quick draw. And that's it. But don't worry about that shit. If you stay locked in your house, nothing's going to happen to you because what might happen outside people I really fear for America. I do, I do. Our Fox, president Fox is right saying now. things like, um, we are going to dominate the American cities with the military. Yeah. Whoa, it's scary. Have you ever heard a president say that before? No, I haven't. No. I haven't. I'm 74. I've never heard a president. Never Not in this country. Of, not in this country. Oh, yes. Now you hear it all the time in Georgia and, um, uh, you know, Yugoslavia and Turkey. But no, not in America. But yes. Um, now, if, if there are soldiers on the street, they are not going to be bursting into homes. They're going to be shooting people who are on the street that they think might be rioting or might riot tomorrow or whatever. Yeah. That's what soldiers fucking do. Right. Stay inside. I, I know that that's a very uh, cynical uh, outlook. But, but it's I'm reality. For people, I'm yeah. 74. I've seen shit and experience shit that most people cannot believe right and i'm telling you now i have never seen in my 74 years the world teetering on a point 
like it is now. I don't know which way that fucker is going to fall. It's so hard but to I tell. Fear, I fear that it is going to fall. And you don't want to be under it when it does. Inside your home, no matter what happens, you're going to be safe. No. Uh, is, that a, is that a cowardly thing to do? I don't give a shit what words you want to call it. People, I'm 74. I'm still alive. I've been in jail in more countries than you can fucking count. Uh, I've had people shoot at me. I've experienced yeah. some adventures. And I'm the man telling you, stay in your fucking homes. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, John. Appreciate it, buddy. All right.